But this time we're going to get ready for the Word of God. And you get your Bibles out. You could go on the app. Um, we'll have the notes on there. But this is a message, uh, Michael, that God, God really gave you. Yeah. And I believe it started to birth out even when you were, you were in Africa right. on the missionary trip. Kind of explain what God, what, what was God showing you there? Well, there's really a, a kind of incredible story that God, you know, God did something in my heart and through the context of this missions trip really began to spoke something, speak something to me about remembering. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was talking with you and Pastor Marco about that. And, of course, here we are at Easter time. This is a time that all of Christianity gets together to remember what Jesus did. And so today we're going to talk yeah. about how important remembering is. And this is, like you said, it's something that, you know, we'll share some stories from Africa and how that impacts us. But really, this is something that we need to be doing tonight. Yeah. And then we need to do on Friday at our Good Friday yeah. service here in person. And then, of course, on Sunday, yeah. all day when we're, we're gathered together. So, I love it, man. So here's a title. If you're taking notes, write this down. The title is Remember. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go over some components of what we need to remember, what, what should we remember. So the title again is Remember. You know, we're getting ready for Friday. And one of the things we are going to do, we're going to be taking communion. Right. And I love this opening scripture that you have, Michael. 1 Corinthians right. 11, 23 and 24. Just kind of remembering what Jesus did. What did Jesus tell his disciples? And give us an example here in 1 Corinthians, how Jesus is telling us we need to remember about the cross. Right, and this is Paul talking about communion, but he says, I have handed down to you what came to me by direct revelation from the Lord himself. The same night in which he was handed over, he took bread and gave thanks. Then he distributed, distributed it to his disciples and said, and this is Jesus speaking, yeah, yeah. take it and eat your fill. Wow. It is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. I love that. Right. Love it's it. a powerful verse, and it's yeah. a verse I think many of us are familiar with. Yeah. But here's the thing, Pastor Rob. You know, Christians all over the world, they celebrate communion. We go through uh, most most places yeah. that, you know, they go, they grab that bread, they grab that cup. They may sing yeah. a song about the blood. But the emphasis here is not on the cup. It's not on that bread. It's actually on remembering. Yes, remember Jesus, Jesus gives said. a very clear command. It. Do this to remember, remember me. I love that. Right. And we that's need to remember what, what Jesus did on the cross. And that's what Easter is all about. Right. We're pointing at it. I thank, I thank God it, it's on our calendar. Every year, everything stops and we're going to remember right. what Jesus did over 2,000 years ago. Absolutely. So I love that. So what are some of the questions we're going to be answering tonight, Michael? So I want to answer three questions about remembering tonight. One, what does it mean to remember? Two, why is it important to remember? And three, how can we make sure to remember? So what, why, and how? Very yeah, simple that. tonight. So what that. does it mean to remember? Do you want to start with that first simple definition of remember yeah. for us, Pastor Rob? Yeah, I'll read that. The definition of remember, have in or to be or have in or be able to bring to one's mind an awareness of someone or something that one has seen, known, or experienced in the past. Right. Exactly. So remembering means thinking about or meditating on what we've seen, known, or experienced in the past. And when we talk about remembering, this is something really important that Pastor Marco pointed out to us. It's important that we know we have the ability to remember. Right. And we also have the ability to forget. That's exactly and that's why right. Jesus is telling us very that's clearly, right. remember. He's giving us an admonishment. Yes. He's giving us a command. Remember. And he even says in Luke, yeah. do to do remember as often as you get together. Yeah, that's exactly right. right. And that's why even at the church, you know, we do it once a month. I mean, I want to go further. You know, we're going to do it on Friday here at the church. We're going to have communion right. to remember what Jesus did. But let's go a little further. What about having communion at your house? With your family. Right. I know when the church was even shut down because of uh, the coronavirus, we were doing communion that at was home. One of the most amazing thing. Imagine just you and your kids, you and your wife, or if you're single by, your, by yourself, even have a communion at your house remembering what Jesus did. Because if we right. don't think about it, you're exactly right. We can forget, we move on, and we really don't see and experience what Jesus went through on the cross. Absolutely, and I think one component of this, Pastor Rob, is a lot of times we do communion so often yeah. that it becomes a religious ritual instead of a moment where we really take time to remember and think right. about what that really means. When Jesus tells us to remember, what is he saying? Yeah. I want to look at this verse uh, that's going to give us two components of remembering. Yeah. It's from Romans 5. It's verse 8. It says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, yes. Christ died for us. Yes, thank you. So God. there's two components of remembering yeah. revealed here. First is the while we were sinners. Yeah. While we were still sinners. And that is component number one, thinking about 
who I was. Wow. That's part one of remembering. Think yeah. about who I was. This is a, a question you can ask yourself in this context. Yeah. What was life like before I met Christ? Now, this, yeah, is, like this is the source of this inspiration, Pastor, yeah. Mar- uh, Pastor Rob. We were in uh, Comp- uh, excuse me, Kakamega, Kenya, on the streets, and we were going out. We were getting ready to do an adopt-a-block outreach. We were getting, buying some groceries, and we were approached on the street by six or seven boys who live on the streets. Now, just wow. to paint a picture of what a street child's life is like in Kakamega, yeah, it's yeah. pretty much hopeless. Yeah, These right. boys at a very young age are addicted to drugs. Many of them are addicted to huffing glue. It's a, wow, a very easily accessible huff- drug. Yeah, to- they get these bottles of glue. They're sniffing that. They're, they grab alcohol if they can. Wow. But most of them are addicted uh, to dr- both drugs and alcohol. They're starving on the streets. So these young boys who are starving or addicted come up to us, ask us for some food. And wow. we as a team say, well, let's take you out to get some breakfast, right? Yeah. We take them over. While they're preparing the meal, we're talking to these boys. Yeah. One of the boys has a bottle of glue in his sweater, Man. held close to his nose. He's literally sniffing the glue while we're talking to him, and we're encouraging them, hey, it's time to give it up. Right, it's time right. to surrender. Do right. you want to get off the streets? Right. We're offering them a place at the orphanage. Yes, yes. Wow. One out of seven of these boys says yes. Now, these Man. boys are raging in age from seven to maybe 12 or 15, wow. right? They're very young boys. Yeah. One of them says yes. He comes off. His name is Eric. We got a picture of Eric. Let me show you Eric. Hopefully, yeah. This there is Eric right in the middle. Wow, cool. So we were ecstatic. We got Man. Eric off the street. That he met day. him on the streets there. We literally got to glue. see Eric's life completely Man. saved, right? He's not going to die on the streets That's of right. Kakamega. Amen. But here's the thing that really began. This is where the story really starts to get tur- turn. Yeah. Three days later, Eric leaves. Oh, He's wow. been addicted to drugs for God knows how many months or years. Right. And he got that urge. He left. He walked out. So after a very long day of ministry, our team piled into a van and drove around the streets looking for Eric. We come up to a bus stop and again, we're surrounded by a group of these boys. Seven, eight years old, nine years old. One little boy, he identified himself as Shadrach. He couldn't have been older than seven years old. They're addicted to drugs. They're totally lost. They're starving. And I'll tell you the truth. This is where I'm almost embarrassed to, to tell you this, Pastor Rob. Everything inside of me wanted to slam the windows and get out of there. Yeah, it was imagine? so oh. painful yeah, to look imagine? at, to see these boys literally oh. dying on the streets. I oh. go home that oh. night, and I'm saying, God, what are you doing with these boys? God, right. why would you show us that? This, right. this, is, so, this is so hopeless, yeah, yeah, exactly. this situation. And I heard God speak clearly to me, Mike, that's what you were. Wow. That's what you were. And it talks about that in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. It describes some hopeless people, some sinners, some people who are in the situation just like those boys on the streets. Yeah. You want to read read that? Yeah, read it for you. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Don't you know that wicked people won't inherit God's kingdom? Stop deceiving yourselves. People continue to commit sexual sins, who worship false gods, those who commit adultery, homosexuals or thieves, those who are greedy or drunk. Um, who, who use abusive language, who rob people, will not inherit God's kingdom. That's what some of you were. Right. And that's where the hope is. It's in right. Jesus. That's where the good news comes Jesus in. Jesus can set us free. How many has been set free by the blood of Jesus, by the power of God? But that's where we were. Right. And right. that's what we're talking about, remembering and the first component is remembering who I was. I love that scripture. That's what some of you were. But you have been washed. I love this. Mm-hmm. But you have been washed and made holy. And you have received God's approval in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the spirit of our God. That's the amazingly good news that we can change. So yes. I'm hearing God say, that's what you were, Mike. Yes. And he's reminding me of the hope yes. that comes when Jesus meets us in our most hopeless moment. Yeah. In a moment where no one, I wanted to get out of there. But in that moment, Jesus walks in. And, and there was a time in my life when I was exactly like those boys. When I was looking for my next tie. When I was looking for my next bottle of beer when I was looking for my next sexual encounter and God was as far from my mind as could possibly be but at that moment that is the moment that Jesus chooses to step into to bring salvation to bring hope to a hopeless situation it says in 5:8 he died he died for us while we were still sinners so the first part of remembering is remembering who, who we was. were who I was while I was still wow, a sinner I love that and then that brings us to the second part yeah second component I'll read it second component of remembering again we're talking about remembering first part remembering who I was before Christ 
Here's the second component, thinking about what he's done. Thinking about what Christ died, what he died for, what did he do? Think that's what Easter is all about, remembering right. yeah. what Jesus did for us. A hundred percent. I love that. So the hope comes from knowing what Jesus did yeah. for us, right? It's yes. not just knowing who we were, it's also knowing what he did, that he yes. died for us. Isaiah 53, 3 through 6, this verse, I love it, this yeah. is the ERV version, but I'm going to just take my time as I go through. Yeah, just I want you ahead. to get a picture, I want to paint a picture for you here of what Jesus did for us, yes. for each of us. Thank you, Father. Verse 3, people made fun of him, wow. and even his friends left him. Man. He was a man who suffered a lot of pain and sickness. We treated him like someone of no importance, like wow. someone people will not even look at, but turn away from in disgust. Man. The fact is, it was our suffering he took on himself. Wow. He bore our pain, but we thought that God was punishing him, that God was beating him for something he did. But he was being punished for what we did. That's right. He was crushed because of our guilt. He took the punishment that we deserved. Yes. And this brought us peace. Yes. We were healed because of his pain. Yes. We had all wandered away like sheep. We had gone our own way. And yet the Lord put all our guilt on him. Man, yes. So Thank the good you, news is... There's a price that needed to be paid yes. for us to be met in that yes. circumstance. Yeah. But Jesus paid Pay for that it price. All. How many are thankful that Jesus paid for it all? He did it. doesn't matter what you're facing. I love it. It says in the screen, he suffered. He took on himself. He bore our pain. Right. He bore our pain. Maybe today you're, you're suffering. Maybe you're suffering the loss of a loved one. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's a sickness. Um, you got a bad report from the doctor. By his stripes, we are healed. healed. Absolutely. Jesus paid the price. It doesn't matter where you're at. And maybe today you don't know Jesus. At the end of this teaching today, I, 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 I beg of you, I urge you, receive Christ. Give him your heart. Give him your life. And watch you begin to turn your life around. You, you're looking for peace in all kinds of different places. The only one that could give us peace is Jesus. Right. The only one that gives us joy, we are talking about joy the last few weeks, is in Jesus. And it all happened because of the cross. Right, right. And I love, Man. you know, Hebrews 12, 2 says that he did it for the joy set before him. Man, and in some yes. translations, it talks about the joy of knowing us, yeah, right? Yeah. And here's the thing that blows my mind about Jesus dying on the cross, Pastor yeah. Rob. This is a just a, a, a thought, a revelation that God gave me this, this week. It's Jesus is dying on the cross. He's in this excruciatingly yeah. painful yeah. moment. He's in the most painful moment of his life. He's That's literally right. dying. That's right. And a man on his right says, hey, can you forgive me? Yeah, yeah. And Jesus turns to him at that most excruciating moment and says, yes, you're going to be with me in heaven yeah. today. Then he looks down at the foot of the cross. He sees his mother weeping. Yeah. Her son is dying on a cross in front of her. Yeah. The most painful, tortured death ever. And in that moment, he turns to her and he turns to his disciple John and says, John, this is your mother. Mother, this is your son. The thing that blows my mind is that yeah. Jesus, at his worst and his most lowest moment, is remembering us. Yes, he's, he's remembering the us. people around us. He's looking at his mother. You know, Pastor yeah. Rob, this is why it blows my mind. Yeah. I have diabetes. Yeah. Occasionally my blood sugar goes high or low, and there's situations where I'm kind of a little, a little funky. I'm not feeling my best. And if someone comes to me at that moment and says, I need something, Nine times out of ten, I'm going to say, no, I can't help you. I'm busy. I need to get some sugar. I need to get some insulin. I'm too busy to help you in your point of need. But Jesus, who is literally dying on a cross, thinking is about thinking about the needs of those around him. He's thinking about us. He's thinking about our need. He's thinking about those boys on the streets of Kakamega who are so distress, disgusting. People are turning away from them. He's thinking about dying for them, becoming like them so that they can be set free, so that we can be set free. Free from the bondage of our own choices, of our own mistakes, of our own failures. Man, I love that. That's amazing. Jesus did it all for us. That's While people why. were humiliating him, betraying him, suffering, he was thinking about us. Right. And maybe you're watching today and you're thinking, I don't know, has God forgotten about me? He has not forgotten about you. He loves you. He's reminding you. He sees your pain. He sees those tears at night. 
He loves you, and he bore all of it on the cross. That's why this week is the greatest week ever because everything was nailed on the cross cross. with Jesus. It changed everything. The penalty of sin was nailed to the cross. Right. Absolutely. And on Sunday he rose from the dead. Oh and, my gosh. And so we need to Man. remember. We need to remember. We need, we need to, to remember, remember our need for him. We need yeah. to remember what it was like that moment yeah. where you knew that your choices had yeah. led you to a place that you couldn't pay the price. Yeah, that it. moment where you wanted to stop the addiction, where you wanted to yeah. stop the sin and you could not do it. Yeah. That Jesus paid the price to come into that moment love and it. bring freedom. So you're remembering who you were and you're remembering what he's done, how yes. he died it, for us. I love Here's a second question, Michael. On the God gave you, um, why is it important to remember? Right. Why is it important to remember? And we're talking about it right now. It's really simple. This is the gospel. Without remembering, there is no salvation. That's it. Without That's remembering, it. there is no salvation. That's exactly right. One Corinth, First Corinthians, <laughs> First Corinthians <laughs> one, chapter eight. Or excuse me, chapter one, verses eighteen. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Man, that's Isn't, it. This message of the cross is yeah. is almost crazy. You're saying a man went and died on a cross for my sins, yes, and that yes. that means I not, I can have eternal life, that I can be set free of yep. all of my mistakes or all the consequences of my that's sin. Right. That's the message of the cross. That's, exactly That's right. what remembering does for us. It reminds us of what Jesus did so that we can be saved, so we yes. can yeah. turn our lives over to yeah. his care and experience yeah. salvation. I know I've shared this story again. I'm going to share it really quick yeah. about the cross. I remember at a prison, we were at, um, we were at Pelican Bay. I've shared it before. I'm going to share it again because it relates to this. We're at Pelican Bay. And we went into the roughest part of Pelican Bay. It's called the shoe. Um, people actually, they just live in these cells by themselves, no one else. And they gave us five minutes to talk to each inmate on that level. Mm. And before we went to these inmates, we said, God, Holy Spirit, you're going to have to move. we got five minutes. What do we say? Right. And we started sharing the gospel. And I remember sharing the good news to one of the inmates. And he actually committed murder. Mm. And he just began to cry. He right. said, how can God forgive me? I've killed someone. And when I began to share about the cross on what Jesus did, he paid the penalty of our sins. Man, this guy began to cry. And right there in that cell, in less than five minutes, he gave his life to Jesus. Wow. That's why even when you're witnessing, people will try to just kind of have the conversation, go another route, and ask you silly questions. Right. Get back to the cross. To the cross. When exactly. you're talking about the cross, it is the power of God unto salvation. Right. There's power when we talk Absolutely. about the cross. Absolutely. The cross leads us to repentance. Without remembering what Man. Jesus did, there can't be salvation. No, there isn't. So that's the first important, most important reason love to it. remember. You cannot be saved without remembering yeah. who you were and what Jesus I did for it. you. And there's a story in the Bible, Pastor Rob, that's going to get into the next important reason to remember. It's in Luke chapter 7. But this is going to show us that the more we we remember, the more we love. The more we love. I love that. So why is it important to remember? Without remembering, there is no salvation. The more we remember, the more we love. Luke 7, 44 through 47. He turned toward the woman and said to Simon, have you noticed this woman? When I came into your home, you didn't give me any water so I could wash my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You didn't even pour olive oil on my head, but she has poured the most expensive perfume on my feet. So I tell you that all her sins are forgiven, and that is why she has shown great love. And here's your point right here. But anyone who has been forgiven for only a little will show only a little love. Right. And I love, I love this story. You know, this woman has a revelation. You know, it says very clearly in this chapter that she's a sinful woman. She's got a notorious reputation. People in that room are actually judging her, verbally speaking out loud. Wow. She's, you know, talking trash about her. And she comes in in a moment, and she's totally acquainted with, reminded of, remembering who she is. She's not forgotten it. She knows she's a sinner. She knows that she's a sinful woman. But she also knows that standing in front of her is the answer to her sin. Standing in front of her is Jesus. And she somehow has this revelation that this is a moment that she may not get again. And with everything within her, she begins to pour out her love. She begins to pour out her worship. She recognizes in that moment who she was. 
and who Jesus is, what he's going to do. It's almost as if she knows that he's going to the cross. She's bringing anointing oil to anoint him for his death. And there's this revelation inside of her of how important it is to remember who she is and remember who Jesus is and what he's doing for her. And that's what results in this incredible love. And the converse of that, the opposite of that is these men who sit in judgment of her. Yeah. They've forgotten who they were. Yes, exactly. They've forgotten right. what they Forget. needed. They forgot that they needed a Savior, right. and they're sitting right. in judgment of her. And, they lo- and Jesus makes it very clear. Because you think you don't need me, because you've forgotten what I've forgiven yeah. you of, you love me less than yeah. you should. Powerful but this that. woman has not forgotten. She's, not She's forgotten. remembering, and yeah. she loves me, and it's shown in her great love. I love that. So why is it important to remember? Without remembering, there is no salvation. Right. The more we remember, the more we love. Right. Here's the last thing, number three. How can we make sure to remember? Right. How do we do that? Maybe some practical ways. How do we remember what Christ did or where we came from? How do we do that, Michael? Right. Well, I, I call this setting reminders. You know, I have, an, I, I have an iPhone, Pastor Rob, and so I get to say things like, hey, Siri, set a reminder. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Siri, set a reminder to call Pastor Marco. Hey, Siri, set a reminder to uh, meet with my Power 12 at 7 yeah, o'clock. Yeah. Hey, Siri, set a reminder to read my Bible. I love that. So setting a reminder. That. This is what I, I, I want to I share this verse. This is a super important verse for, yeah. for me as, uh, personally. Jeremiah 31, 21. It says, Set up landmarks, put up road signs, remember the highway, the road on which you traveled, wow. come back, my dear people Israel, come back to your cities. Now, this is, this is a beautiful verse because yeah. Jeremiah is actually talking to the people of Israel who have sinned, who have made a lot of mistakes, but they're on their way back to yeah. God. Yeah. And there's two things about this remember moment. Yeah. One is remember the way so that you can lead others, lead others. down that yeah. path, right? Yeah. And the second is remember so that you can look back and recognize how far yeah. God has brought you. Yeah. So set awesome. some reminders. Reminders, some reminders that are going to help other people and some reminders that are going to help us as yeah. we move forward. You know, there's an example of this in, in 1 Samuel chapter, excuse me, 1 Samuel seven chapter 12. 7 verse 12. I was talking about yeah. Pastor Marco. He's about an inside joke right yeah. <laughs> Make sure to say first. 1 Samuel <laughs> chapter 7 verse 12 where basically Samuel and the people of Israel get into a big battle with the Philistines and God delivers them. And so yeah. Samuel sets up a reminder. Yeah. He sets up a monument. And that's what we need to do in order to remember like where God has it. brought us from. You know, yeah. I've got some practical examples. Yeah, you were saying something about... Really, the reason why one of the reasons why you go on mission trips right. it has to do about setting reminders. One hundred percent. So mission trips. Why do I love them? Because yeah. they become these reminders in my life. You know, since I got saved or rededicated my life to the Lord in two thousand seven, I've gone on a major mission trip every year. Whether it was Honduras or El Salvador or Ecuador or India or Africa, I've gone somewhere in the world and I've spent time on that trip yeah. journaling all oh, that God's good. doing. That's and good. I've had moments like I described earlier where I I saw something that. Yeah. Yeah. just totally broke my heart. Now, the heartbreaking Love part is not It's not just that your heart's broken and you're yeah. emotional, but it's that God in that moment comes in and reminds you of the wow. gospel. He reminds you that he has set, he, he sets you yes. free. He reminds you that he died for those boys. Yeah. He reminds you that he died for that starving child. He reminds yeah. you that he died for the mother who can't care for her children. Yeah. He reminds yeah. you of what he did on the cross on those it. trips. And I so I encourage it. everyone, do Outreach. You yeah, don't have do to necessarily go no. right no. now to Africa to experience this. No. You could go to the streets yeah. of San Bernardino with yeah, Adopt a Block or to right. Pomona. That's do right. some outreach. Schedule some time yeah. in your life where you're going out and you're sharing your faith yeah. and you're seeing the need that's, that's right. out there and that God's heart would be shared with you. Yeah, and remind you of why he came and I what is that. important. So that's so, yeah, so, yeah, some of the examples are really quick. Even like you said, some practical ways. Maybe... I don't know, maybe you're not going to go on a missionary trip. I, I don't know. Um, share your faith. Right. Share your faith with a loved one, a family, a friend. Share your faith with someone. Right. That set of reminders. You know, this week I'm going to share my faith with maybe a coworker. Right. And as you're sharing your faith, you're going to be reminded on why Jesus came. So you, yep. Yeah, I love Schedule it. Schedule a time for outreach. Another thing that one of these reasons these trips are so great is I'm journaling, it. right? Oh, yeah. I'm writing down what God is doing. I'm yeah. writing down the way that he speaks to me. I'm writing down things that That's even good. in my daily reading, Pastor yeah. Rob, I actually have a one, I buy a one-year Bible every year. This is another practical That's example good. of how you can set reminders for yourself. I have a Bible that I get every year and I write notes in it. I read it every day and I write notes. And I can go back. I can grab my Bible from 2009 and I can look at what God spoke to me that year. Wow, I can grab my good. Bible from 2012 and I can look and see what God 
talked to me about, what he told me, what, how he spoke to me, yeah. some of the things that he set me free from yeah. that year, the deliverance, the freedom that I experienced, the going through things like freedom at the yeah, way. So these reminders, a journal, a daily Bible. I like and, that. And this is another part of the outreach is yeah. the praying for praying other people. Praying for somebody, yeah. Right. Schedule time to serve. If maybe you're not serving right now. This weekend you can serve for Easter, but schedule time. I'm going to serve on Sundays. I'm going to serve on these new Wednesdays that are coming up. Schedule that time. Those are reminders. Right. And when you're there, you're going to see the power of God show up. And again, you're going to run into people that are hurting, that are struggling, and they were remembered of what Jesus did on the cross. Right. I love that. So set reminders. And number two, um, how do you make sure to remember uh, Michael, you had put worshiping with other believers. Can yeah. you explain that? I like that. Yeah, yeah. So we got a great verse. I want to um, have you read for us. Yeah. But the, the just the idea behind this is when you get together with other people yeah. who are worshiping, something will change. That's it can right. remind you of who God is. That's it can right. remind you of what he's done, right? Yeah, yeah. And I love Psalm 42, 5. It's, a, it's the psalmist here. One of my favorite psalms. Yeah. He's talking about how it's hungry crazy. he is for yeah. God. But he comes to a moment where his, his soul is downcast. Yeah, it's, downcast. It's kind of depressed. He's going through a tough moment. And, and he we've all been there. We all go through situations oh, we all go like through that. that all the time. And he reminds himself in this verse to Man. praise, to worship yeah. God. This is a scripture, Psalms 42.5. Take courage, my soul. Do you remember those times? But how could you ever forget them? When you led a great procession to the temple on festival days, sing with joy, praising the Lord. Why then be downcast? Why be discouraged and sad? Hope in God. I shall yet praise him again. Yes, I shall again praise him for his help. Right. And I Man, love this. Man, I love that. So, Pastor Rob, I get I up um, on Sunday mornings yeah. around 3.30 in the morning. It's still dark outside. And I'll tell you what, I'm not always in a good mood at that time yeah, of the morning. No <laughs> and so a lot of times I get up and, you know, the immediate thing I have is let's go back to bed. Let's right. not get ready. Let's right. not go to church. I don't want to be there today. I'm tired or whatever the excuse yeah, yeah, is, yeah. whatever those thoughts are going through my head. Yeah. But I tell you what, time after time, Sunday after Sunday, when I walk into the house of God, when I walk into yeah. a worship service where right. our team's up here just going for it and singing the praises yeah. to God and declaring who he is yes. and, and there's people all around us raising our hands and dancing and yes. worshiping, it doesn't really matter how I felt up until that point. Oh. Something rises yeah. up inside of me that yeah. remembers. Yeah. I'm reminded yes. of who God is. I'm reminded yes. of what he's done for me. I'm reminded yes. of the places that he brought me. And in that moment, all right. that despair, all that gone. downcast Man, part goes. is gone. It's lifted as we worship with other believers Man, surrounding that's us. That's awesome. That's what the Bible says. Do not forsake the assembly of one another. That's why right. the, even this weekend for Easter, we're getting ready for these great services. And when we worship together, man, there's a freedom yeah. in the house. Absolutely. Maybe you haven't been here in a while. You say, man, I don't know. Come this This is homecoming this weekend. But I love this teaching, Michael. Yeah. And really in conclusion, again, just reminding us the message. Remember. Remember, remember who you were mm -hmm. before you met Jesus. Maybe today you haven't met Jesus. Right. Today is going to be your day. Yeah. And remember what Christ did. That's what this week is all about. Friday when we get together, it's going to be Good Friday. Why is it called Good Friday on such a, a day of, of just pain and suffering? It's good because that's where salvation, mm. it's at the cross. Yeah. Jesus paid the penalty for our sins. Yes, so it's a good Friday. So this Friday we're going to be here at 7 o'clock. We're going to have a time of communion right. again, remembering remember. what Jesus did. And I thank you, Michael. Give Michael a round of applause. He got this message. I just love it. And we have more notes. We don't have time to go into all the stuff that we had. And such a great teaching for this week, especially during this Easter season. And, well, let's get ready to pray. If you're at home right now, maybe you're at work, I want to ask you a question today. Let me ask you a real important question. If today were your last day on earth, where will you spend eternity? You're thinking, I don't know where I'm going. I'm not sure. This is where, this is what we're talking about. Jesus came over 2,000 years ago and he died on the cross to forgive you, to forgive I of all of our sins. All you have to do is put your faith in Jesus. It's not about a church. It's not about a religion. We're not going to die and when we see God, God's going to say, hey, what, what church did you go to? If you went to the right church, you get to go to heaven. You get to enter. 
If you're in the right religion, you get to enter. That's not going to be the conversation when we pass away. The Bible says we pass away, it's judgment day. The books are going to be opened. One of the books that's going to be opened when we pass is called the Lamb's Book of Life. And in that book is all the names recorded who have put their faith in Jesus. Is your name in the Lamb's Book of Life? Is your name recorded in this book of life that when you pass away, they're going to look at this book and all the names, the Bible says in Revelations, all the names who are not found in the Lamb's book of life, they will be cast into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. It's a real place. That's why Jesus came. It was such a gruesome death. All the sins were on Jesus at that moment on the cross. All the things that we have done. All the lies that we've told and all the things that we've done, it was right there at the cross where Jesus paid it all. Right. So I'm going to ask you a question. Do you want to receive Jesus tonight? Do you want to receive what Jesus did on the cross? If you're saying, man, that's me, Pastor. I, I would love to be forgiven of all my sins. Man, I want to make sure if I died today, I would go straight to heaven. Man, I want to make sure that my name is recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you're saying, that's me, Pastor, bow your head and close your eyes at this time. Maybe you're at work, maybe you're at home right now. If you're driving, pull over for a sec and say this prayer with us and you will be saved. You will be born again. You will be on your way to heaven. Every head by every eyes closed, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, Jesus. I ask forgiveness and I repent of all my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. And become my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I am a disciple. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the price for my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you just said that prayer, you are saved. You are born again. And we're going to go into another song of worship right now. And as we sing this song of worship, you know, use this time right now maybe to pray at your house. Maybe you're a family there. You could have a time of prayer, praying for your kids. And let's just go in this last song of worship. And I just pray right now as we're singing this song that the Holy Spirit is right there in your home. He's going to heal you. He's restoring relationships there in your home. Maybe it's a marriage. He's restoring a marriage. So as they sing this last song, let's worship and use this time of ministry right there in your house. God bless you guys. Jesus a shout of praise right where you're at in your home. We love you guys and let's remember what Jesus did. So this Friday, Good Friday service, 7 o'clock here at the Hallmark Campus live in person. You don't want to miss it. And then Sunday Easter, 6 a.m. Sunrise service. If you've never been to a sunrise, man, it's one of the greatest services you could ever attend. 6 a.m. 
Then we have 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. God bless you guys. Let's remember this week what Jesus did on the cross. We love you guys. Have a great evening. We'll see you Friday, and we'll see you Sunday here live in person. God bless.